we're here at Pivot in Tempe, Arizona. And we're here with Chris Kokalis, the CEO, and he's gonna show us around. Welcome to Pivot. This is our lobby entrance. We have a full demo program out of here that runs from, well, basically when it stops being hot here in the fall until when it gets too hot here in the spring, uh, you can demo a bike in the morning or afternoon for $50, and then we uh, donate that or use the, the money to maintain trails on South Mountain and out at Paws in the East Valley. Uh, and then the lobby here just has some of our current production models. The point over there is for a, a fundraiser that we're doing, and then we've got some of our athletes' bikes in the, in the lobby. So uh, Chloe Woodruff's Olympic bike from the Rio Olympics. We've got Bernard Kerr's 10-year anniversary edition. And then uh, this year, Jenna Hastings won the Junior Downhill World Championships. Yeah, it's got the Lightning McQueen thing going on. This is actually a Pivot prototype number one. It's before Pivot was technically established. We, uh, Bill, our production manager, had uh, his machine shop, and uh, I built this frame in his machine shop. Actually cut all the tubes with tin snips and, uh, and hand fit them with a grinder and pretty much got it ready to go on the, on the fly. This is our Pivot Factory racing wall. Uh, it's been a really successful year uh, for the, the, our factory racing team. We won actually four world championship jerseys. Uh, and then the team's expanding this year. We started a new program with the, uh, the Pivot Next Gen team. So we've got a bunch of younger riders and they'll be attending several of the World Cups uh, downhill races this year. And um, basically the team will help them through the process of racing World Cups. And then someday they'll get super fast and then teams with a lot more money will take them from yeah. us. <laughs> Pivot customer service. So when you call in, this lovely crew will be taking care of any questions. Lovely crew. <laughs> We're out of the offices and into the warehouse and assembly line, and um, this is uh, basically things come out in the back door and they go out the front door. Um, we basically have two assembly lines here at Pivot, and one of them focus pr focuses primarily on the, the analog bikes. This pr production line is completely flexible, so the guys can be assembling a vault or a less or a downhill bike. So this assembly line is designed for if we're doing a large run of the same bike. Up to date, it's really primarily been our e-bike line. Okay. So and they all get hung on these carts, get put into the waiting room down here, and then when they're ready, um, load it onto the assembly line here. So. Uh, with the shuttle SLs, we can do about 24 bikes a day. Wow. And with the shuttle LTs, we can do about 20 bikes a day. Oh. So um, this is our QC area. Basically, everything that comes in to pivot before it goes into inventory for the salespeople to sell, these guys will go through a full QC process of at least 28 steps, depending on the model of bike, where they're checking the bottom bracket tolerances, head tube tolerances, all the torques on the bike, running the pivots through the through their motions and basically just making sure that everything is spot on. With the steps we go through at the factories, very little makes it here that isn't basically ready to go. So these guys are just doing final checks. So he's gonna show it in a frame, but basically one side says go, one side says no go or no good. Um, and one side has to slide in and the other side, if it goes in, the head tube's too big. And the difference between these two is actually less than the thickness of a human hair. Oh, wow. We are in our R&D lab center. Um, this is where we make all the gauges, some of the tooling, and all the prototypes. We have three CNC mills, a CNC lathe, composites oven, composites material cutter, two 3D printers and a variety of other things to make sure we can do pretty much everything under the sun. So over here is where we're developing the composite frames. Basically uh, on a production pivot frame like a Trail 429 or a Mach 4 SL, you're looking at about 400 to 500 individual pieces of carbon fiber in the front triangle alone. A lot less than that when we're just doing a down tube or a chain stay. But still when we're doing those, quite intensive in the number of layups and the schedule that has to be kept to make sure that 
the stiffness is correct in all of the directions. So we can actually tune the layup of, uh, of the parts, make sure a chain stay has a certain bending stiffness versus torsional stiffness. Um, and if we're not achieving what we want on one tube, we can, we can change the design and go at it again until we get things where we want it. This is an example of, uh, of one of the products. You can ride this, yeah. So uh, this, the prototypes wind up being, um, depending on the model of bike, about half a pound to a pound heavier than what a production carbon fiber frame would be, just because of all the overlap of the lugs and everything. But it's really changed the way we were able to do things and the speed in which we're able to do it. And basically making a first prototype ride like we expect a production bike to ride. So they're gonna crack open the mold while you're here filming. And, and voila, a magic carbon fiber down tube. Can you touch it? Yeah. Don't do that. No. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to our design and engineering department. Basically, when we start a project, we'll get together, we'll do some really research on what's happening in the industry, what product we wanna make, how it's gonna fit into our product line and, and basically its category. We'll work through the geometry, the shock, everything else, all the key details of the bike. Then the, the engineering team will really take on the project to lay the bike out, get it ready for prototyping. Concurrent with what we're doing in R&D, we'll start to design the actual finished, what the finished carbon frame will look like. They, they do the mechanics and they make it look pretty. But during that time, new parts might come out. We might have a new tool that we're trying to fit on the frame or a power meter or something else. So the, the way the team designs the 3D models, we try to design them robust enough so that we don't, we're not starting from square one. One of the big things we do on every bike, we don't necessarily need to always 3D print out the whole bike, but we always 3D print out the, the section down here, usually up through here, so we can put the bike through its travel we can make sure that the, the cable housing is moving in the right direction. It's not bowing out and hitting chain rings or rubbing paint off the frame. When we're designing this stuff, we'll design this part to be replaceable. So if we're not happy with what we've got, we don't have to 3D print the whole part again. We can oh, just 3D print a section oh, wow. um, and put a new section in there. It's one of those parts that no matter what we do in the 3D model, if we just draw a line here and put a tube in, it's not going to behave the way a real cable housing or a brake line is going to behave. So um, we really have to go through the mechanics of doing it exactly how it's going to be in real life. So yeah, this is our history wall. Like I said, we've, we launched in 2007 with the Mach 4 and the Mach 5. And then next year we had the Firebird, so our entrance into longer travel bikes. As you can see, everything in those first years was all aluminum when we launched Pivot. The, the Ibis was out, Giant had carbon fiber bikes out, but they were super heavy, super flexy, and less reliable than the aluminum ones. So we kind of felt like to be the most cutting edge, aluminum was still the best way to go. When we were done, that first uh, five, seven carbon was a whopping three eighths of a pound lighter than the aluminum frame, which is <laughs> a, really a joke now if they were only that, that, that far different. Um, but that was pretty big gains for the time, and we did increase stiffness. Um, and the bike tested out at a much higher level than the aluminum bike. So we kind of achieved all three goals with that. And then from that point forward, we had a couple more aluminum bikes in the line over time, but they, once we launched carbon fiber bikes, Pivot customer just really did not want aluminum bikes yeah. so much anymore. And then we kind of stop here at 2021. We need to continue our <laughs> wall <Yeah>. around. <laughs> all right, Chris, thanks for walking us around. Thanks for running us through yes. the history. It was great to see everything. Thanks for coming.